Yes, I'm really convinced about exercise. And when I say exercise, it is, you know, for a lot of people, it means sweating. It means, you know, going to the gym, things that many people, frankly, do not like. There's incredibly compelling data showing the effect of simple walking. And I, you know, I, I was struck by the whole, the whole Fitbit craze with the 10,000 steps and having, you know, been one of the early adopters, I, I tested this, you know, to walk 10,000 steps is, is, you know, there's a lot of walking every day, which means that for most people will buy their Fitbit, they will try, they will be successful for a month or two, and then they will get discouraged and then they will go from 10,000 to 1,200. And so I, you know, I researched a little bit to see where, where is this 10,000 step coming from. It actually came from an initial app that was a, a pedometer that's something that you could wear on your belt that was sold in Japan in the 50s or 60s and and they they were the first one to recommend a 10,000 step turns out some colleagues have actually looked at the data trying to see predict people's longevity as a function of the number of steps and what they found was actually somewhat different is that most of the benefits of walking actually occurred within the first 5,000 steps. And that's that by itself was a, a remarkable finding because, again, we talked about earlier the realization that most of your longevity is determined by, by your activities. Walking 5,000 steps a day is, is relatively easy. And, and, and so this is part of my routine, you know, take a walk with the dog. In, in addition to the sports that I do, Independently, I just try to do the walking and I encourage people, if you're not walking at all, start walking 15 minutes every day and then 20. And then, you know, typically, you know, I do this with my mother who is not an exerciser and was complaining, you know, she's 87 and was complaining about aches and pains and, and inflammation and so on. And I, I got her to start walking 15 minutes a day and it just made an amazing difference, even just on her psyche, on everything. I think, you know, medicine, uh, exercising is, is the best anti-aging medicine that we have today, clearly. And personally, what I try to do is if you're asking me what my tip is, because the, the bottom line is that when I exercise a lot, I can eat anything I want, which is, so that eliminates the second variables, almost anything I want. But I, I think I try to combine a variety of exercises that addresses all of the needs that your musculoskeletal system needs. And that would be endurance, car, cardio type of exercise. So the long, long, low level duration, I do some strength training. So, you know, you don't need much equipment. You don't need a gym. You can just buy you know, a couple of dumbbells and, uh, and a medicine ball, and this is all you have to, to have. And, and there are classes everywhere on YouTube, on, you know, everywhere you look, there, there is a new class that's free. Or you can join a gym if, you, if, you, you know, if you're more social. I think it's important to include balance. You know, we talked about fancy things in the aging research field, but typically people die from falling which is really, it strikes me to this point that, and they die from falling because they lose proprioceptive sensation in the feet with peripheral neuropathy. They, and they don't train. So your balance is something that you can start training for your whole life, so standing on one foot or doing exercises that are linked to balance. And finally, flexibility. So, you know, I love yoga, Pilates, all of these forms of exercise incorporate a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of uh, balance, a little bit of uh, strength. And so I encourage you know, all of your listeners to try to find something that they can stick with. And, and I mean, the quality of their life will clearly increase.